now. So just an interesting point that you made mention of Christ being Lord and Savior. So my understanding of that is one of a higher disposition based upon the Greek term called kurios. And then you look at the other term, um, Saviour. And Saviours, they're akin to being many in the Old Testament, like in Judges, chapter 2, verse 9, and in uh, uh, other parts of the Old and New Testament, in which the Lord is referred to as one of a higher disposition, as is a Saviour. So Saviour is given one who redeems his community. So in Nehemiah, chapter... I slipped my mind out. Judges, chapter 2, verse 9, and Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 27, Others are referred to as saviors as well. So all it carries is a title of honor of a one of a high disposition, i.e. Lord, and the one who comes to redeem his community. Hence, these are ubiquitous titles for those who are referred to as Lord and saviors. So if, if you were to ask me as a Muslim, I would accept it in that context, the way it's been normally understood according to the Hebraic custom. However, what then happened, the term Lord and Savior took on a more of a um, divine aspect in the various post um, um, New Testament writings of the various councils where these eulogies were then made literal. So Lord and Saviour according to the Greek or Roman world would have been one of a like a semi-god type of status where an individual who um, is um, of a high disposition would be given like a this um, semi, best way to semi-god status hence the term Lord is used. But of more interest for you you see when we look at terms like Lord, Kurios or God, Theos and the confusion here is unraveled by the fact that the term Lord is akin to the Almighty as well. It can be given to the Almighty God. It can also be given to human beings. And the same term Greek word Theos, that can also be given to the average individual who is of a high disposition, given the title as God or Gods. But it can also be given to the Lord God as well. So these were ubiquitous titles which were, did not differentiate. Today, if me and you, if we speak about God Almighty, automatically we're going to assume the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one supreme God. But in those days, it was a common understanding that one would be given these titles of one of the high disposition, but then it did distinguish between the Lord God and the individuals who would be given this title. So just to refer to this point, just to sort of sake of clarity, Lord and Saviour is simply one who is of a high disposition, hence given that title, and Saviour is given there as one who does God's work and redeems his community. Furthermore, and we see of, of extreme significance in Acts chapter 8 verse 36 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6, where, it says, for, where Paul says, For unto us there is one God, the Father, by whom all things are made, and then one Lord Jesus Christ. So what even he distinguishes Paul between who God is, who is the Father, and who Jesus is, the Lord, the exalted Lord, who is brought up to be, being Lord by God, as I made mention in Acts chapter 8, verse 36. So it's an exalted. With that, there is a bit of a contradiction. I have to admit with that. I appreciate that, yeah. Because there is a bit of a... In one of the things it says, Jesus is the Father. So Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Savior. I fully admit, and in this, there is a scripture that says nobody gets to the Father for a day. So, except for a day. So, well, that's not, it's not a contradiction. It's not. It's, I'll, I'll clear it up as well. I know what you're referring to is in John chapter 14, verse 9, where Christ is um, uh, speaking to Thomas and to Philip. And Philip says to him, show us the Lord. And Christ says, Philip, I've been with you for such a long time. And have you not seen that he that has seen me has seen the Father? If you continue reading, he's mentioning in his words. So it's, it's like telling Philip, Philip, don't ask me these questions. You're asking silly questions. God's not going to come and say, woohoo, here I am, check me out. Because in 1 John chapter 5, verse 37, and in 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, it says God cannot be seen at any time. Furthermore, you would be then equivocating the heresy by referring to Jesus as the Father. That's a heresy according to Christian belief because they, don't, they believe they are three distinct people, in, um, three, three distinct persons in one being. And so it would be heretical to associate the term Father for Jesus. And Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel as well for, um, you know, that, there is, that, uh, uh, that, they were, that, that it is for futile that they call me Lord. I think it's in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Futile that they call me Lord, but the one who does the will of my Father, God in heaven. So those who give him this exalted title of no benefit, those who give the appreciation of God singularly, that is what is referred to as the invitation of what Christ spoke of. 
So what, how I see reading the New Testament, and I've read it, uh, you know, to a reasonable extent. Um, not that I'm an expert, but just some, some <laughs> although the way I'm going on, perhaps uh, you're looking and thinking, you know, why is he rabbiting on relentlessly? But the point being, it's saying no more than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, my friend. It's not, it's not here to just show, you know, my, my, what, you know, that I'm something special. No, but far from it. All I'm trying to show to you is that the Islamic personification of God res would, should resonate most applicably to every individual. Because God is unlike his creation. God's not a man. He's not a woman. He's not an idol. He's not a statue. He's totally unlike his creation. Upon that law, there is no, there is no you know, being or no likeness upon to him. What does Christ say in John 17, 3? Christ says the following, For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent the messenger, Jesus Christ. Which is what we say about Christ. The Islamic testification upon who Christ is, is a prophet of God, one who represents God, however carrying no divine title whatsoever. Mark chapter 6 verse 4, Matthew chapter 21 verse 11. He claims to be a prophet, which is the Islamic testification. So thinking about this, Jesus is an prophet. It's Mohammed. It's Mohammed. Well, it's not on that board, but we've got some other similar tables as such, which actually says, um, you know, um, uh, uh, one God, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, vicegerents of God, representatives of God, which is that it, it fits nicely, you see, with the New Testament narrative. So when you look into the New Testament, what I find quite conspicuous is the fact that Christians seem to not understand the text which that is, which is speaking to them. They seem to overindulge in a verse which they have contextually misunderstood. Father and I are one. Oh, Jesus is claiming to be God. No, read the context. In which way, why does he say the Father and I are one? One in purpose to redeem the Jews, to bring in them worshipping God alone. You see, really my eyes. So what I would invite you to, my friend, is a singular one being, the one true God. The God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Solomon, David, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, who all came with that central message. Now, more significance for you, which is going to be somewhat of a surprise. Did you know the way, you know the way Muslims pray five times a day? Are you aware of the methodology of the Muslim prayer? Bowing first to God, kneeling in prostration. I thought it was quite common you known amongst the oh, public. Oh, sorry, sorry, I would be a bit, a bit like that. No, that's fine, no problem at all. No problem at all. Um, so we pray five times a day. As you'll probably be bowing prostrate to God. There's a mention of that in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 4 and 6. Very, very clearly it says, let's worship God by bowing and prostrating to Him. Invoking God, saying Amen, we say Amen. Calling upon God, standing in congregation, the way we do in praying, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. Offering a little prayer, offering a little wash before we have the prayer. It's mentioned in Deuteronomy. So as we as Muslims, before we offer our prayers, we have a mini wash. Start washing our hands, other parts of the body, face, arms, finish by washing the feet. As mentioned, that's how, due to, that's how Moses would pray in congregation, worshipping God and God alone. That does explain it. Sorry, I'm speaking of something else. That's fine. I'll explain what we're Fabulous. Fabulous. You see, what we're, what we're, what, 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 and there's a verse in the Quran that Allah, Allah is the Arabic word for God. Let me ask you something. Do you know what language Jesus spoke? What colloquial language he spoke? So Jesus spoke a language called Aramaic. Okay. Although he came from uh, the ethnic line of uh, uh, the Jewish race, however, he spoke. So. He spoke. He spoke a language called. He spoke a language called Aramaic, which is a, which is a cognate language of Arabic and Hebrew. Hebrew is the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. So Jesus, upon whom be peace, would re refer to God as Allah in Aramaic, not Arabic. Aramaic. Arabic is Allah. In Hebrew, it's Allah. 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 Sabah. Funny. Or when he's on the cross. Yes. What they call the tongue of the devil. Pardon? Aramaic. That's sort of the tongue of the devil. Who said that? Or am I thinking of? That's a, that's a, that's the language of Christ. No, I've got the language back. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no problem at all. Do you want to say I don't want to be relentlessly going on? Would you like to say anything? Does it resonate what I've said to you? It's, it's really opened my eyes a heck of a lot because I've, 
I didn't know much of this. I didn't actually know. I mean, I accepted that Jesus Christ was the same. But I was still learning. And it really, our conversation has actually really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Like, for example, people around me were saying, no, you don't, don't believe in any other God because it supports God. And that's what I was thinking. And so I had the conversation with my friend and myself. You see, there's a make. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Excellent. I do believe uh, Jesus, Muhammad, etc., etc., were prophets of the Bible. And that. If that's what you believe, in, in, a, in, a quite, in a quick instance, by proxy, that makes you a Muslim. The Islamic definition of an acceptance of a one supreme God who sends prophets is the Islamic testification known as the Shahada, the similar testification which Christ gives in John 17, 3. For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God and whom you have sent, referring to himself, as the messenger sent by God. John chapter 17, verse 3. I do feel that I'd like to learn more. Fantastic. In which case, we've got lots of information on the table. We've got free Qurans, free literature, take whatever you like. What I will compel you to understand, however, is our God is God of everyone. Not just for Christians or Muslims or for Jews or for whoever. He's the one, he's the one supreme being who's created the whole universe. To him is our return. That is what we believe in. What we say as Muslims, we never give God any form of creation as akin to him. He's beyond creation. There's nothing like him, nothing comparable to him, nothing can resonate with him, nothing can in the sense of com 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 comparativeness. So when I say resonate with him in the sense of one who can compare to God, no, far beyond us. So this is the Islamic narrative. And what you're saying, what I'm saying to you, making you con contemplate, is I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. I want to offer you some literature over on the table. It's strange because what you're saying is bringing bells with me a heck of a lot more than the bells of Christianity. And you know what that is? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It's not eloquence of, on my part. We understand that in every single human being, God has put something innately within us. That is an inclination towards him. Because he's our creator, it's like DNA within us. Even those who reject God unilaterally, still within them, we will have many conversations with atheists here as well. That inclination and the fact that they're so rigid in many cases as to their position, however, the fact that they want to realize more and look at the potentiality of their being a creator is in itself intrinsic to understanding which has been inbuilt within us. So what you're saying is not like, as I said, I'm just no one. It just resonates. What's, what I'm saying is resonating because it's God putting it in within you. Because one day we're going to die, my friend, and we're not going to be here on this mortal curl anymore, as they say. Right? So we have to be consider of, considering of this and lead a life pleasurable to our Creator. So the prophets were examples to their communities at their time. They were given revelation that needed to be followed. The Quran is the final revelation given by the Almighty God to mankind. It's a verbatim, express word of God, not having third or fourth party narratives. I would invite you to accept Islam. It's very beautiful, very straightforward. Many, many people are becoming Muslims. Many, many people, because its concept of God spectacular. Makes total sense. Religion of peace as well. Yes. But in terms of, you know, it doesn't have this inconspicuousness of a, like a, a, a human being being God. They refuse that out of hand. Say he's Allah the one. The eternally besought of all. He begetteth not, neither is he begotten. And there is nothing like upon to him. So I, feel like I feel like we need to have more conversation. Fabulous. In the meantime, whilst we're still speaking, I'm going to offer you some literature there. Take it away, have a good read. We're going to be here over the next four days, 5.30 to 9 p.m. If you want to come back and have a further conversation, you're most welcome to. I'm going to give you some literature now. And um, do you want to say something? Because I've spoken quite relentlessly. 
Let's have one, one of, let's have one of them out, let's end the burden. I feel like what we talked about makes a heck of a lot more sense than what the beliefs I have. And I feel like what we've talked about, I feel a bit more strongly towards what I mean, I personally, I personally would want to eat. And I feel that with Christianity, even if it's Catholic Protestants, it does cause conflict. See, this very concept is the real burner of who God is. This is where singularly we should focus on. We've got so many different schisms, schisms and schisms of uh, Christian belief on, on who Christ is. So many initial phases of Christianity where they convened certain councils in the 4th century. Because there were so many different pockets of belief about who he was. No one had a clue. It was only later due to a Greek or Roman um, you know, influence on the biblical right, on the, uh, on, on the period of time that they lived, that they incorporated a man-god type of image based upon historical char characters such as Plutonius, you know, a Greek philosopher from the 2nd, 3rd century whose influence was much akin to Greek philosophers who incorporated this understanding of Christ also being as a analog analogous to this um, Platonius character who lived in God, the universe and the intellect. And these were three amalgamations which they conceptualized as the Trinity and hence try have tried to make sense of this. But let's make, Islam comes to simplify it. One God, unlike his creation. Same mind, little Yes. Sir. Thank you. So one God, unlike his creation, we are going to return to that creator, make sense. Let me give you some stuff. Sure. Good man. Yeah. It's really opened my eyes. Yeah. And I now I feel that I might want to learn a heck of a lot more. Yeah. It now seems to me the religion of Islam. Islam, sorry, is. Stay now stopping you to become a Muslim because I think Brother Mustafa has cleared out everything. And everything clear. And of course, the final point uh, also been cleared. Sorry. Yeah, come, sorry. So I think the final. Brother, what's your name? Ryan. 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 Brother Mustafa is like, Alhamdulillah, he explained beautifully to you. Listen, brother, listen to me carefully, Ryan. Islam is universal. It's for everyone. It doesn't matter what you are, it doesn't matter if you're black or white or whatever, like Jacko once said. Point being, <laughs> point being, it's for everyone. You accept the religion, you become a part of a universal brotherhood. If you're here regularly, you're going to be helped very quickly. That's because the Ghost Foundation. They will help you out. You just say you become Muslim. You will show evidence by the channel we've got over here. The brothers are here regularly. They will help you, my brother. You will see it in action. You will see it in action. Okay? And plus also the concept, the concept is makes sense to you, which is the final, final bit, which is the, uh, the afterlife. And Alhamdulillah, it has been explained to you as well. So he already believes that, Allah, that God is one, God sends prophets, Prophet Muhammad peace be with God's messenger, just like Jesus, Moses, yeah. Abraham. I think he's ready to become Muslim. Yeah, and the final point is, uh, in Islam, we, we don't believe no one takes no one's sin. Every will be, everyone will be accountable for their own sins. Allah said, Every soul bear their own accountability. So, so Mustafa is not taking your sin, I am not taking his sin, you are not so exchanging your sin. For example, you don't go around going, you're a sinner, you do this, you no. do this. Put in the blame game. No. You have to fix yourself. And Allah said, this, how you fix it? Through the genuine repentance to God. Oh, wow. Repent. So we don't believe in things like sacrificial atonement, where someone comes down and dies yeah. for your sins. No. If you, if you sin, you simply ask God for forgiveness. God is most forgiving. 
you will forgive me. You did with a humble heart, and with a genuine heart. Once you do that, Allah will forgive you. That's the Islamic concept of how one attains forgiveness yeah. by asking Allah to well, My vision, my eyes are open and my heart is softened. Yes. Right. Alhamdulillah, this is the salvation. Salvation is simple that a, a child is not born a sinner. No. A child born as a masoom, sinless. sinless. And we acquire sin. And we make tawbah, repentance, and Allah, Allah said He is Ghafoor Rahim. You know? He's forgiving and merciful. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'll ask this right in, in, in the, the, the testification. What we need to help the brother as well, the brothers are familiar, if someone can take him down to the, the mosque, to the mosque. Ask him to come, inshallah. Ask him, he's becoming a Muslim, send him the video. Yes. Help him as well. It's not just inshallah. a matter of him. Yeah, yeah definitely, inshallah, we'll. Yeah, yeah. So to show Islam in action. Yeah. What, what, what that? We used to be a program called World in Action. It's probably a bit before your time. Um, but it's done. Be on, it's done be on, on ITV. It's going to be a long time. Anyway, now the point being is that uh, you're ready. So let's check the testification. Then you can put something sweet in your mouth as a mark of recognition, which is often done at weddings and such and such, once you've uh, heard something sweet. So what are we to understand is what you're about to testify. There's only one God. There's only one God, my brother Ryan, there's only one God, God sends messages, the final message is Prophet Muhammad, along the lines of the message that preceded him, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be Say the following after me, open, let, Allah's, let Allah open your heart, say Ash, Ash, Hadu, Hadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, 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 Il, Il, Al, La, wa ashadu, wa, ra, wa, wa ash, ash, hadu, hadu, anna, anna, Muhammadan, Rasul, Rasul, Allah, Allah. I bear witness, I bear witness, and I testify, I testify that there is only one God worthy of worship. And I testify that the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, upon upon whom be peace, is God's messenger and servant. With that, I'm 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 Mashallah. Let me give you a big hug, you know. Now you become uh, become a part of a family. Let me give you a hug. Let me give you a hug, my friend. Yeah. You now you become a part of the family. Now, yes, Alhamdulillah. So he become, he joined um, two billion family. Alhamdulillah, nearly two billion, right? Alhamdulillah. So you know, yeah. Now there is a reason why you know, God. She feels very, she feels very nice. Yeah. Do you feel any? Yeah. Yeah, it's not just coincidence. No, yeah, exactly. Allah, Allah, make this plan. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So we need to dip our brother here. Yes, inshallah.